now we have to wonder what exactly he's going to pick up here. What Haru wants to go with. Once again, Talia becoming a premier ban across the board. Let's take a sec to talk about Haru and what kind of champion he's going to look to bring up. And just to clear it up, he did play one game of Rengar in summer. It didn't go fantastically. Got a win on it, I believe. It was against lower opposition. He will play the meta, but you see Jarvan, that was his big pick, played it in the two games he played in the postseason. Both were losses, and in typical Haru fashion, both were actually warrior Jarvan. So if he can, he will try to go aggressive. If they wanted a more defensive jungler, they would play Ambush. Well, for now, Jarvan is still available. No longer available after Fenerbahce banned it away. Looking at the other picks, like Janna Lulu still up here. First pick wise as well, we've seen Zaya come in if Rakan is available. Well, Rakan just got banned, so I'm glad the teams are just joining in your after I said it. Your predictions are coming in there, Deficia. Still predicting them, but my prediction for Samsung is a change in ideology. Haru is the first indication, but they played defensive. They watched as RNG stole their lunch, stole their dinner, stole their clothes that felt like off the bat, and basically took them down. So they really need to change their style because they're going to want to end the week 2-1. and one. And of course, with two hyper-powerful supports in the meta, Lulu and Janna available, 1907 Fenerbahce opted to take the Sejuani first, knowing that they'll get whatever is remaining. But that means Samson Galaxy are poised to take quite a powerful bot lane with the Lulu already locked in. And with the 1907 Fenerbahce, we have a team that's committed to playing standard. We have a team who's been committed to try and play for late game as well. And it's a bit of an issue for them because mechanically they will not go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the players here at Worlds. And as you know, it's a team in terms of late game macro, because they don't even have move here, they have crash, they can barely communicate, it's not gonna be the same. And they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. They tried playing crash style in some of the other games, playing more aggressive, but the other four members are used to playing around move, are used to taking it to late game, but you're opting into late game with a mixed language roster against Samsung Galaxy. Ambition be damned, it's very difficult to beat Samsung in the late game, even at full power. And now, as the first pick rotation is locked in, once again, standard, nothing mixing up. They hover the bar, they tease there us a little bit. There we go. But that's the mix-up. We said aggressive junglers for Haro. Hey, you want a warrior enchantment? That looks like a pretty good champion to pick it up. And he was one of the first to pick it up. Kane and Ezreal in his match history in solo queue, so no surprise that he's the first one from Korea to bring out the peak. I'm sure Peanut is watching on and hoping he gets a look in at some <laughs> point at Worlds. No sign of the top laner pick, but you'd have to think it's gonna need to be a tank to set up the Ezreal. Well, also looking at the Lulu Tristana here, uh, the reason they take Lulu first is because they want to push in the lane, which is what Lulu can bring against Janna specifically, because when you play Ezreal jungle, you want to have pushing lane, so you can play very aggressive, invade the enemy jungle, duel the Sichuan, who can't touch you at all. So I'm expecting a pick from Crown in the mid lane as well, with good wave push. 1907 Fenerbahce expecting exactly the same, then banning away Lucian. Galio's the one I think you have to consider. It's not a big pick for Crown. He's only played it twice. Both victories. Galio Kazic is an old favorite of the LCK. Galio Ezreal would work like that as well. But I agree with you, Deficio. As long as it also helps the pushing, expect Haru to be on the front foot and invading all the time. Bands oh. remain focused at the mid lane. One additional thing we have to remember is that Patton hasn't been the strongest point, so pushing him in, forcing him under his tower, could put him into another one of those early laning deficits. But now we're into the next pick phase as Shen will be the final band. Normally when I see Cassidy and bans from Korean teams, I'm looking at Talia, but she's already banned away here by 1907 Fanny Bache. Cinder would give you the pushing lane. Corky is also available, but he's going just with strong early laning phase. So you got good bot lane, you got good solid mid lane, and you have the aggressive jungler. Samsung are not looking to just sit back and do nothing for 20 minutes. And Samsung Locking in Syndra is not a trivial thing. Shaw Crown has had ups and downs, largely downs, you'd have to say, in summer season where he struggled. He is competitively undefeated in summer season, 8-0 between Rift Rivals and LCK on the Syndra, the pick that he couldn't play at last year's Worlds. He talked about it. He said that if I could play Syndra, maybe we could have won the best of five against SKT and not had to ban it. This has been a big pick for him this year. And Syndra and Ezreal so much damage. Syndra with the power to set up early ganks. Ezreal with more than enough in a red buff early game to bring home the kills and that has to be concerning for the side of 1907 Fenerbahce but it's going to be Frozen's Echo coming in in the mid lane to answer. Yeah I really wanted to highlight that pick specifically from him because it's something we saw in play-ins which was so good from Frozen. It was actually probably the best a pro Echo I've seen in a while at least judging from what we've seen here at Worlds but uh, locking the choke up top with Trundle available 
I'm not a fan specifically because again, 1907 fan Abaji have a composition that takes a lot of time before it comes online. And you look at Samsung Galaxy, what do they do? They siege incredibly well. Trundle Pillar behind the turret, Ezreal, Tristana, Syndra to rein in both ranged auto attacks and harass, and Lulu also to help the disengage. Not necessarily going to be ganking top lane, you'd have to think, given that's just the, the uh, Trundle, but he can kind of do his thing and he can focus on other lanes. Haru on the Ezreal. Once again, Samsung with a composition where it feels like they do really need to find a lead in that early game. Ezreal wants an advantage, does not want to be an item behind some of these tankier threats, especially when so much of the damage coming out is AD on the side of this lineup. But either way, it's a tough ask for 1907 Fenerbahce to find big leads in the early game with the composition that they've assembled. Well, they cannot afford to lose these lanes. They just want to stall. We saw Long Shu in the last game against Fnatic wait 15 to 16 minutes before they did anything. Same kind of deal here for 1907 Fnatic. They just shouldn't be able to do it against these very strong lanes and the Ezreal. There should be so much pressure on them. And we've already seen doing worlds that have kind of struggled to go at least go even in lanes. And it feels almost perfect that in this early game that all eyes have to be on the substitution, that all eyes have to be on Haru. What is he going to bring to the table? What will he show us that Ambition did not? And pick like Ezreal already starting him off pretty big here for his performance on the world stage. We know that the coach has incredible faith in Haru. He says, in scrims, in practice, this guy performs. What we saw on stage in summer did not match that description. Now we're at Worlds. Now we're at an international tournament. He needs to come back strong if he wants to keep his place going into the tournament and 2018. Of course, we have to remember, while Samsung may feel comfortable going into this matchup, may feel like they are the stronger team and results have proven that thus far. If you are Haru, if you are a sub and you lose here, could be damning for oh, yeah. your career. Damn. And we can see the reason why he hasn't seen as much playtime in the LCK. And it's honestly about what it means for the rest of the map. It's what Ambition brings in terms of shot calling and predictably. Interview with QV said, okay, you ran Haru, what's the difference between Haru and Ambition and Summer? And they basically said that when Ambition plays, everyone thinks about the game more frequently. There's more updates in the chat. They're more aware of their limitations and Ambition naturally plays defensive and plays coverage. Haru in spring season was a relevation. It did actually make them very aggressive, but you can see the flow on effects a thousand gold difference when Haru plays and it's not to the positive. And I think for me, just the, the big thing when you watch Samson with Haru, is just they take they gamble a lot more. Like, they're okay going for really risky plays, especially around him specifically. And when you look at Samsung with Ambition, it's very low risk they're always going for. So I really want to see if they're going to be in the face of Fenerbahce, if they want to take some of these even 50-50s and rely on the mechanical skill of these players here. Will that be the option? Well, for now, it's going to be the enemy red buff where they start. Joanne will be spotted out. She starts on the blue on the top side. Hard May just be able to run back and connect. Quick level two here could just go right into the mid lane. Well, we've seen this play before here where you steal away the enemy red buff as Israel, and then you make sure to go over and cover your own red buff. Might as well take oh, a gank first. Throws in. This is going to be first blood. Red buff takes it down, flashes out. One more auto, cleaning it up for Brown. Bad communication here from 1907. Fan budget. The dual lane from their team should be able to communicate. Okay, guys, there's a chance they're stealing away red. They could be leashing it. Careful in the mid lane because we know Israel will go from red to red. Obviously, there's a mid lane in between. Might as well take a first blood on the way. And it's a really poor mistake on the world stage to make. They saw how Samsung entered the bot lane. They should have had the information out there. They saw the invade a little bit earlier. Ends up just being complete freebie. Able to go red to red, so it will be a three buff as well to compound the misery for 1907 Fenerbahce. And now no flash from Frozen either. Always the worst feeling. You use your flash to try and escape, and then as an auto attack or whatever flying that actually ends up killing you. Howard can go right back into the mid lane if he wants to after this blue buff. Of course, only three jungle CS, but it's all three buffs. Haru has to feel pretty comfortable to continue his clear. Gets the blue buff right as he's running out of mana. Going to be easy for him to keep up this breakneck pace if he can find the opportunity. I mean, at this point, it's been single target for the Ezreal. Enemy red, enemy mid laner, red and blue, and onto Grom. So only single target so far as we see here. Right now, the information doesn't come in. The bot lane sees them enter now. They could have, of course, given some information a little bit earlier, but Frozen is still going for this last hit, pushing the first wave out. Seems really greedy to me, guys, and he pays and for it. And 
at the end of the day, we just have to assume that that's communication breakdown. We know Frozen, if he had the information, would have played back, would have given the Ezreal respect. But we talked about communication issues on this team. Crash coming in as a player, not able to communicate in English, whereas the rest of 1907 Federbache prided themselves on having one language across the lineup. Well, now down the bottom lane. We see it's still being fairly even because we're so early. No big advantages going either way, even though we have seen that actually during Worlds a few times where early push means that you take an early CS lead and get a bit of pressure. Not in this game. The unique thing about this game is that Japone is actually not running any gold runes on Janna, which has been ever present since much earlier in the season. So has actually gone for combat that's respecting Ruler and Core JJ, along with the strong picks they put together. So they do have the Relic Shield for extra income, and of course, the Ancient Coin, but not also the GP10 on a Seals and even Quints. A lot of people have been running. Balancing it out with the Relic Shield nicely. Now the bot lane remains relatively even. As it looks pretty strong, poised to crash into Crash himself. Uh -oh. It's going to be difficult. Arcane Shift up and available. Is he going to go over the wall? Nope, just a quick ward. Happy to just dominate the jungle. Doesn't need to win out on these small duels. Crash may still give him the opportunity. Very forward positioning there from the Sejuani. It's barely any camp for Howard to steal away at the moment. He's waiting for everything to respawn except for his own crux up there in the top lane. But as an Israel, you're spending a lot of time taking them down while you're not harassing the enemy jungle. Instead, Ooh. we get a fight. Good pillar comes in from Kuve, pinches Daldrin in here. Haru has the opportunity. He has to shift forward. Pretty easy for them to pick it up. Another kill for Samsung. And it's just very strange. They see the Israel walk into their jungle, and yet Thaldrin is walking down the river, actually giving Cuba a chance to just pillow him and both force the flash and get a kill because of two flashes from Samsung. You think about what would happen in a different team where the communication flow is flowing. Very early it would be, okay, Ezreal's in my face, but also Ezreal still has flash up. Ezreal has Storm Raider Surge, it's something they should know at this point as well. And Thaldrin walks deep, faking a ward, faking that he's gonna help out his jungler, and then he's done. And it's a grim pass because at this point there's just nothing you can do and it's just going to be the rinse and repeat. Haru running it down, has the Storm Raider Surge. It's going to be an easy chase down. Thaldrin running for his life. Crash nowhere to be seen. It's the long slow goodbye as Kuve is going to grab that kill. Exactly, two flashes blown in the early game by a 1907 fan. A bunch of two members dying at the same time and obviously Haru can just return to the scene of the crime here. And great start for him. Almost too easy. I mean, it's hard to mince your words. Unfortunately, when you compound the decision-making, the communication, it does feel eerily like Jungle Ezreal and Solo Q that you and I have all felt because there seems to be ripe targets everywhere that Ezreal goes. It's his second shot. He adds some long swords. It's all too easy for Samsung Galaxy. And Samsung proving that they are a strong team as they punish very small communication errors. It's turned into so much more. The gang is middling. Miscommunication from Jogat on the top side, but frozen. Luckily for the team, still has the ultimate, still has a certain degree of safety in this lane. So it's not all over yet, but a 2K gold lead, six minutes and 30 seconds into the game is brutal. Break. Being started as well. I mean, right the bottom lane, there's really not a whole lot uh, we see from Zaya and Jan in return. They can't do much in the 2v2. They're going to have to get crashed down here once he hits level six. But at this point, everything should be warded up as well by Sam. Good abusing of back timers by Samsung as well. They knew that Hone had gone back to finish up his first item, the Forbidden Idol. They were able to abuse in top lane when the teleport back to lane came through from the Cho'Gath, so they've been smart playing around that. And also, just to talk about something that isn't kills in this game, we saw Double Ward come down from Haru on the blue side jungle. That wasn't necessarily only about stealing away camps. It's Trundle versus Cho'Gath. We know this guy. If he's going to have a free lane, farm up, push in, and if you have two wards down, then the Szechuan is going to be very productive. And up against Kuve too. Thaldren, strong veteran leader for the team. Clutch when it comes to mid to late game, but the early laning hasn't always been his strongest suit. And in a matchup where Cho'Gath naturally going to get punished, feels like Samsung Galaxy are bringing everything to the table to shut down anything Fenerbahce and 97 Fenerbahce wants to do. Well, Crash hit level 6 now. That first ulti really needs to give something back here. 1907 Fenerbahce, they were looking around mid first, but there's Cleanse on Crown to counter, obviously, the Sejuani ulti. Meanwhile, Haro, he knows exactly where Crash is on the map, and he's going top lane. Oh, what can Thaldrin do here? 
locked out. Frozen Domain comes in, Subjugate as well. An easy kill pickup. Nothing for Thalgen to hold on to. But Crash is trying to fire back. Nice interrupt on the ruler. No input buffer that time around. Ultimate is not going to connect on the ruler. He may just be able to make his way out the heal use. The barrier not available. One flash left, but it's for Core JJ. And that means 1907 Center Bachi are going to fight back. Nice gank here from Crash. Interrupting the jump from Ruler. Should actually not have happened in the first place. Core JJ though tried to block at least the Sichuan ult, but not enough. Ruler going down. Heal, barrier, flash. Everything used. Important. For Fanabacha to get a kill somewhere on the map, so to have a lane they can try and play around because top lane is completely done. A sort of mind game there where Ruler misplays. We've seen so many Tristanas get out of adversity, buffering their rocket jump. That okay, you watch this VOD, and if it does end up being a quick Samsung victory, you feel like if you're gonna play Samsung in the future, what can I take away? That's a small window to exploit if Ruler's gonna be that greedy. This was about as simple as can be elegant there. You see the bot lane, Ruler could have played this very differently and ended up losing the maximum with his life. Like the little uh, block there from Core JJ, but it's not enough and obviously Ruler will end up dying at the very end. Just that one moment, not quite patient enough on the Tristana jump, have the opportunity to get out of so much, but Ruler I mean, overplaying you can, his hand. You can also use your ult to just shoot away Sejuani instantly when she jumps in. Uh, obviously there's a chance she can try and flash towards you, but... I guess you have to auto-attack first to deal with the passive uh, that comes through, so the it's always a little bit difficult, but he had a lot of options, he had everything available, so I feel like Ruler could definitely have played that well. Will it be the tipping point in this game? Probably not, but still a feel-good moment for Fenerbahce in a game where they've had nothing so far. Patton throwing up the flare, throwing out a little bit of a challenge, definitely biting the back end of a trade there, though, so <laughs> maybe not quite good. He's that eager, they're that confident, but starting to fall behind at CS as well. Things starting to look a little bit grim for 1907 Fenerbahce as we move further into the game. 3k lead, 10 minutes in, growing, but a little bit slower this time around. And Crown, just using ultimate for pressure here. Is going to get the stun, is he going to ult? Yes, frozen. Might just be able to make it out. Crown still playing with fire here, but Haru is on the way. They're looking to take down this tower, or at least get the safe back for Crown. Frozen was uh, hoping that Crown was actually standing on the little clone right there, but Crown obviously just stepped to the side. No damage dealt to him. Meanwhile, Haru continues his little mission here on trying to shut down Crash. They are even in terms of experience, but there's two kills and two assists on the Estral at the moment. Oh, rough, <laughs> rough game for Crash here. Cannot comfortably enter the jungle. The passive at least gives him enough tank stats to survive the initial shots coming in from the Ezreal, but even just contesting this ward feels so difficult for the Sidwani. No armor yet. The minimum you can do at this point in the game, though, is stop Samsung getting deep wards on top and bot side. So far, they have the control ward at the enemy blue. They have certainly complete control over that side of the jungle. But now, all Crash can really hope to do, given that his lanes don't really have the power to repeat gank right now, is contest the vision as much as possible on bot side and just hit and hope that the game is dragged out and the early game becomes irrelevant. Yeah, and when you're in this situation, even in solo queue as well, and your top lane is this far behind, you're most likely just have to completely abandon that lane and just say, you know what, we got to all in on the other side of the map. You know, have to even the TP coming in from the Cho'Gath, try and make a play on this bottom side and see if you can get a tower because at this point, you got to be desperate. You got to make something crazy to get back in the game. Otherwise, you're just slowly going to lose it. Samsung, as you guys can see, are trying in the bot lane, but might be an opening here. No wards behind Samsung, though, they can actually use the TP on from 1907 Fanny Frozen and Thalgren both sitting ready with the summoner's spell, but they need a deep ward in the brush here where Core JJ is just moving around. Core JJ definitely taking a lot of damage in the exchange. May have stopped Samsung Galaxy from pushing any further. For now, though, I don't know if they can to hold on. Feels like all the onus is on Samsung just to keep the pace of this game moving to snowball this advantage even further. But it's just so grim so early on for 1907 Fenerbahce where we're at the point where we're waiting for so long before their carries can catch up to the incredibly fast snowball on the side of Samsung. And for that catch up to even happen, Samsung would have to take their foot off the accelerator, something that their comp doesn't agree with, something their vision line is so powerful in denying camps over to the side of Fenerbahce. And right now, they're basically playing in the face of their opponents at every moment. And Fenerbahce did just ping near the Rift Hell, so okay, they're saying, we know they're up here, maybe try and stop it, they're sending in the Echo for now, actually Frozen made it into mid lane, so never mind, didn't actually want to go for that one, Trundle must have snuck his way in without being noticed, they're going for mid, trying to collapse on the crown, not going to connect the stun, but he will get locked up in the end by the Sejuani, leap forward, the phase dive, bringing him home and snap back and right out of there. 
Frozen will grab the kill, but it's the exchange of the Rift Herald. That old synergy between Frozen and Crash played a lot in solo queue, and of course, they're both around the long shot or different times, but certainly knew each other very well. Bot lane here, we've seen Patton go aggressive. We certainly talked a lot about Samsung's big advantage, but there still is going to be, when everyone's pushing, those gaps in vision, when it's so deep, the shallow vision is what's usually overlooked. And if there's one member you want to get that kill on, it is Echo for Frozen. It is the carry champion I'm looking at in this game specifically, just because I know Frozen is very good at playing Echo in team fights as well, but he needs so much more. Looked like he was going to stop a Rift Held, but obviously with Ezreal just jumping over the wall and Trunkle just walking his way in past the control ward. Well, it was just a mid lane gank instead. <laughs> Calculated. Well, now we're at the point where Samsung, with control of the Rift Herald, can look to start to push open some more objectives. They take down the mid lane tower. And Frozen doesn't really have as many f open side lanes to go to as he'd like with so many tier ones at the verge of death or already taken down. But Crash does have a repeat gank opportunity. Didn't use his ultimate or flash in that previous kill. It was that mind game with Crown being hoping to flash the ult. There's the ult. Aru locked up, looking for the fall of CC. Ezreal's still alive, but he's taken down from the red buff. Is he going to survive? Lulu is there for Getting the steal, but Frozen comes over. Proto belts him down, and Crown now running for his life. The CC comes through. Deep freeze with the Sejuani, and the double drop for Frozen as well. Samsung with the disrespect around the mid lane, getting so surprised that Frozen is sitting there with Crash. That's two more kills now for the Echo in the mid lane. QA obviously is sitting in that lane that Samsung are trying to completely take over. Well, you have to love the character that Fenerbahce is showing. 1907 Fenerbahce does not need necessarily to hold back. There are holes in what Samsung is doing. They may be losing an inner turret. But Crash didn't use his ult, got maximum value out of the next one. Now he's Packing himself around bot lane. Meanwhile, Frozen is trying to take down this mid lane tower. Let's see the replay once again. So they see Frozen moving into this brush right here. They're trying to get a bit of poke, but then Crash surprising them. No vision of where the jungle is. Going aggressive anyway. And they get completely punished for it. Nice play from Frozen and Crash together. And of course, Crown already used the summoners on the last game. Aro actually used his flash as he died as well. No way, ability to get away. And the snap back kill there for Frozen. So, good on Fenerbahce playing around where they were strong, which was the mid lane. And that's the kind of play we talk about, where you leave top lane, just abandon it. Yes, Q is going to take the tower, but you can't stop it anyway. Get Thaldrin into another lane, and he moved to mid, got that one kill with his team. But now it looks like 1907 Fenerbahce may have to abandon the bottom lane as well, or at least commit more resources here. Luckily for them, Frozen is on the way, a proto belt and a nice shiny sheen on the back of those two kills in the mid lane. So this could be the difference maker. Maybe this could be turning it around, but Samsung just immediately swapping the pressure elsewhere. Crown now potentially in trouble. Or about leaves score, looking for the third stack of the Z drive. Resonance gonna try to pop it there. Crash gonna grab the kill in the end. 1907 Fenerbahce fighting back in terms of kills. Still behind in goal, but they want to keep the train rolling. Rosen leaping forward onto Kube. Has to be ready to snap back in an instant, but the stun will come through. Trundle still so tanky as he saps the stats away from Crash. Now it's Ruler on the front line, but he's gonna get knocked up. Rosen still fearless leaping forward. But 1907 Fenerbahce are on the back foot. The tower poised to fall, but they're gonna hold on for now. It's really interesting seeing Samsung play this game out after getting an almost unassailable lead it felt like in the early game. But you start to see what Haru brings, what Ambition brings. The early aggression was generated from Haru's different take on the game. Some of the slips and some of the mistakes they've made around their advantages also quintessential Haru. They're such a different animal when you just change one member on the roster. But still, with all the pressure in the mid lane, Rift Herald immediately gets dropped. Ruler and Core JJ return to the bottom lane and immediately two towers come as the follow-up. So every time 1907 Fenerbahce gets something, it feels like Samsung are still one step ahead. Yeah, that's kind of thing if we take a step back, we need to remember. Samsung were so far ahead that they were eventually going to get these outer turrets. They were eventually going to get another Drake and then start setting up for Baron. But the fact that 1907 Fenerbahce gets something in return, that's the cool thing about how they're trying to come back in this game around Frozen. It is still so difficult because you fell so far behind and Sam should still be able to keep this gold beam. But the pace of the game being slowed a bit. Gold going into Fenerbahce's, 1907 Fenerbahce's laps. Only less than 3,000 gold behind is definitely significant because at the end of the day, we will reach late game where there's a double front line available on the blue side for 1907 Fenerbahce, and they will be able to fight around that with an Arden Sensor carry. That's not there 
for Samsung. At the end of the day, Cuvé will be tanky to a point, but he's gone Ravenous Hydra. He's largely purely about the, about the split push. So if we ever get to 35 minutes and even items, there's definitely going to be big team fight compositional advantages for the side of 1907 Fenerbahce. And we see what FB can do. We saw it in the play-in stage as well. If you put them in a position where they need to team fight their way out, they so frequently can execute on the back of players like Patton, on the back of Frozen's Echo, but they're going to need to get to that point. And man, Crash is like, he sees four members in the mid lane. He's like, I don't care. I'm going bot lane because that's where <laughs> Frozen is sitting. I'm waiting for someone to show up here. Obviously, Crash realizing no one is actually going to be there because Cuba was top. Four man was mid. He's on his way back now. So is Frozen. Level 13 on the echo. One level above crown. Obviously, 16 is going to be the next huge spike for him. Two items fully completed, though. He's dealing some serious damage. And if he can land that big stun in the back line of Samsung, 1907 Fanabachi can actually still win a fight. Of course, we have to remember the rupture is there to follow up. Sichuani is there to follow up. All it will take is one major form of CC connecting for it to be easy for Frozen to land the parallel convergence. But right now, they're playing with fire. They don't have the information to be playing this far forward. Japone knows it. And just throw down the closest ward he can. Knows Baron's not available yet. Sees the Mystic Shot fly out. Gives away. Samsung are waiting in the bush, waiting to prey on someone who steps forward. Oh, it's so tough when you have no vision in the river right there. Luckily for 1907 Fanabachi, there is no Baron alive, so they didn't actually have to rush in and face check. But later on in the game, it will be the same situation. And then as a team, you've got to decide which player's KDA do you care about the least. That's the guy you're sending in. Right now, Frozen has to be concerned about his KDA as multiple members are ready to collapse. Baron's still not available, though, means it's going to slow down the pace that Samsung Galaxy want to play at with all the powder towers taken. It's really only Kube who has the opportunity to push in, but he still wants a Tier 2 and still remains unconcerned about Thaldrin. Playing the Trogas as, as if he's Maokai. There is a little bit more damage on the side of Thaldrin, but not relevant enough to shut down Kube already. Spirit Visage and five points into his W means that he will have insane healing. I think we should take a step back and acknowledge that 1907 Fanabache actually forcing Samsung to group as three, as four, is already probably more than some people would have expected with how the game plan from Samsung was supposed to be in that. It was supposed to be just huge advantages. Oh, yeah. The rest of the members playing in two. There should never have been a team fight. This thought of getting to the back line should have been moved because there never should have been a 5v5. But we're getting closer and closer to the point when 1907 Fanabache might be able to force Samsung to react to them. I mean, this was supposed to be another game like the one we saw just before yep. between Longshu and Fnatic, where if Samsung is getting that big of a lead early on, level one, they're killing the mid laner, they go top lane, get multiple kills. Like, that was supposed to just be a quick stop in favor of Samsung. Still, though, they are ahead in this game. They have two Drakes. They've been waiting for Baron to spawn. It is there now. Normally, you want to give it a few minutes if you don't have a big tank who can who can just sit there in front of it, or maybe an Elise who can use the spider links. In this game here, it is an s -wheel jungle. He does not want to tank this Baron. Same thing goes for Cordra J as a support, and we know Trundle is in the other lane, so they will have to wait a little bit, maybe look for a kill first, and then go Baron. And also, if you're committing all five members, you're walking right into a team fight. You're walking oh, right yeah. into a Cho'Gath and an Echo, people who are ready to fight at a moment's notice, and the gold might favor Samsung right now. But that difference starts to mean less and less the further we get into the game. 21 minutes, 2K, still pretty big, still pretty massive. The Infernal, still important. The later we get in the game, that might start to change. And a lot of the 2K is on the member that's least likely to be there when the 5v5 starts. The Trundle is almost flame horizoning his opponent here. As Thaldrin is almost 100 behind. Not going to be a surprise. You can see 3,000 gold basically all on the back of Cuba. But for now, Kube remains on the bottom side. Thaldrin in position to match him. May not be able to fight the Trundle, but he can fight the Creeps. And for now, that will be enough for 1907 Fenerbahce. Oh, Crash but is going to find them. Waiting. No, to time no it w. Out. Crown is going to get locked up. The follow-up is there. Team not going to look to use it, though. Cleanse will be consumed. Right, they get the Cleanse. So if 1907 Fenerbahce can find another fight before that summon spell is available, they might actually be able to force a flash, and then they find another fight after that, and Cleanse is back, and they force the Cleanse, and then we keep dancing between that, and in the end, they might have to go for someone else instead of Crown. I'm just so delighted this has turned into something of a competitive match with all that gold being on QV. 4v4, we're talking about almost a slim to no gold lead for the side of Samsung in spite of what transpired in the first five to 10 minutes of the game. Samsung needs to find multiple control wards on one side of the jungle and enact the poke that they've set up to do. And Crash gets another feel-good moment, takes the red. 
Well, QA really wants this tower, but right now, all the Fenerbahce is here. May cost him his life. We'll check what the rest of the team is going to do, if they can even take down the Trundle at this point in the game. Kube is so strong, but still has to burn the Flash. Guaranteed stun comes out, point and click, baby. Follow-up is there. Silence going to cut through. Kube will drop in the end. Yeah, and Samsung not able to just rush a Baron to get something in return, because only three members on the top side. They end up giving away this kill, but it is Kube trading his life for the tower. The panic stations don't need to be enacted even further, Deficio, because Haru was the one poking around. So they're certainly not going to be rushing Baron when their jungler was bot side. Now's the interesting moment. We saw one turning point Baron, a long Drew against the Mortals. They will not try for it. They know they're just so desperately squishy as a four-man unit. They're hoping someone just walked into the jungle here. But another big thing to highlight is the double teleport on 1907 Fanapache. In the late game, and QA sitting in that side lane, what you can do is you can send your Echo down with the Chogath and two versus one gank the Trundle and still use the double TP back towards the Baron in case Samsung is starting that one. But once again, the fact that Samsung is sitting with Ezreal and Lulu, part of that four-man group, rushing Baron is very difficult without a tank. But isn't it chilling that we can say with conviction in the late game, the late game wasn't supposed to come. We all saw how this match started and also 1907 Fenerbahce's struggles this week. It looked like it was going to be just like the previous series, but that late game is looking more and more realistic. It scares me to see how little vision control Samsung is actually having on this map, despite them being ahead the entire game long. Their focus should be to make sure Cubic can push out his silent in an isolated 1v1 and then control the mid lane with Syndra and Tristana and Ezreal, three range champions. Yet. 1907 Fanabache have been able to push out mid and go into the river. But the question has to be, if you don't have a QSS on Haru, who is putting down that vision? Who is face checking? Because face checking against S4 all the Qs. CC. Sure, that's certainly some budget face checking, but at the end of the day, it's hard to get vision down when you have Ezreal jungle. There aren't people that can face check. The Alistair of previous metas, the tank jungler, they're not there. It is a very squishy lineup. So when it comes to the setups, they're very difficult to set up. And for Fenerbahce, it's straightforward. They know what they're doing. They're bulldozing forward, and they're keeping it a 2K gold game. And they've been here before, frozen on the Echo. This is something that they're used to playing around. Thaldron on the Cho'Gath, this is a standard pick for the team. And for Fenerbahce, this game means so much for them. Their first win on the world stage. For Samsung, though, it's a similar story. After such a crushing defeat against RNG, they need to look good here to inspire yeah. faith. It would be unacceptable for a team like Samsung, the third seed out of LCK, to drop a game like this when they win so hard in the early game. And think about what it would mean in terms of head-to-head. -head. They would have a loss to 19-7 Fenerbahce. And what was our storyline earlier in the season, in the in the in world, sorry? It was basically, if you do drop a game, if you are the one or the two that 1907 Fenerbahce were predicted to pick up the ramifications in a very even group. We're going to go forward and have RNG versus G2 in our next match. Two other teams from this group could be severe. The only Korean team to be eliminated in groups was Samsung Ozone many moons ago. And this Samsung, after starting so strong, is suddenly starting to peter out. They're going to need a moment of real madness necessarily from one side or the other to force some action because it has stalled out but the stall favors 907 Fenerbahce. It's a good look at this point in the game. The tanks starting to come more online. Trundle yes will always be a threat to the Cho'Gath as the subjugate. Such a strong ability in a tank meta. Cho'Gath's going to get less and less concerned about the Ezreal and the Tristana. Easy for him to itemize that armor with the Righteous Glory and the Bramble Vest. As the Warmox as well. Extended fights could favor 907 Fenerbahce but oh, that's a big one for Crown. On to Frozen, though, so he gets his get out of jail free card quite easily. We have to look at the minimap often to see if QV is roaming from the bottom lane. We know he can push in the Chogan. If he roams up behind 1907 Fanapachi, he might be able to force a flash with that pillar here. Once again, Samsung 27 minutes in. Cannot really sit here with this Baron and just rush it down fast enough. 1907 Fanapachi should be able to react and then kill off some of these low members who's been tanking the Baron. Both teams playing on a bit of a nice edge here. Small risks. Little buffer is going to take There's him out. No flash. JJ is in trouble all alone. Tries to ult himself, but that's the pick the Fenerbahce needed. They can just turn to the Baron. They're not confident yet. 
It's the same thing again. Samsung are not getting proper mid lane control. So Fanta Bacha can constantly get into the river and look for these picks. They're starting this battle. It's five versus four. Cuba is coming. Daldrin on the Cho'Gath has the ability to guarantee the smite if he gets the timing correctly. Frozen into the middle of the team. They're running forward. They are fearless as they move on to Kube, but he's the tankiest member. Subjugate is still keeping him healthy. Haru in trouble on the backside. Ruler and Crown still remain untouched. There is no tanky frontline to protect them, and that means the rocket jump has to come out. The blast cone to protect Ruler. But Fenerbahce is still in control. Everything on a knife says they did force 907 Fenerbahce to turn off. Bam, they're going straight back to it. There still is not five members. Or JJ has a long way to run. 7,000 on the Baron. Rose is still pushing it for a little bit more. Kube still getting chunked down. The Z-Drive resonance alongside the passive will mean that he could just get executed, but a quick heal up from Frozen, half what he needs it to be, and now they're gonna back off. We have to remember that Kube without his ulti is not as powerful in these fights here, so the first engage, Trundle is almost impossible to kill. A re-engage means the ulti is gone, but now it's Samson staying around Baron. They're actually going towards it now. Kube is here. 1907 Fenerbahce need to get in here. 7k and dropping. Thaldrin on the way in, but the Shogat not fast enough to access the pit. Samsung Galaxy just gonna back off. They know they can't take the fight. All right, so everyone wants to try and reset now. Cube used the TP beforehand. Frozen still sitting with his teleport, meaning now it's 1907 Fenerbahce who can control the bottom side of the map. The answer often for teams is to say, okay, now we rush Baron. We start the Baron and force you to use your TP into the fight. But that means Samsung are then grouped up together in this 5 on 5, not really able to get onto the back line of 1907 Fenerbahce. And with Haru coming in, I think the bigger point is they have not played with this player on stage with any frequency. And after their early lead, with the draft that they'd elected into, they've opted into a different identity that they would ever run with Ambition. They don't really seem to know how to play around it. They haven't been able to get vision control. Their plan seems to be, hopefully, QV can split push an inhibitor, something that almost never happens with how the map is set up. They're not getting the wards down. And the big problem for Samsung is when they get double control ward on Baron and think, okay, we're baiting. At the end of the day, Fenerbahce have frontline tanks that can face it. They just rush in and ult the first person they see. That person dies. There's no fundamental tanky core to the four members of Samsung when is not there. Where now is the leadership going to come from on the side of Samsung? Without ambition here to rally the team with a new strategy they may not be as comfortable with. Can they still grab the dragon? Looks like the answer will be yes. First boon they've gotten in a long time, but Double Inferno will help the comp. They not have the tanks, but they definitely have the threats that can utilize the AD and AP. So three items on Ruler here with the Tristana. Three items on Crown as well with the Double Inferno. So there's a lot of damage on the side of Samsung, but they gotta burn through the Cho'Gath and the Sichuan in. That's a difficult thing. Mainly when teams have been dealing with this big Cho'Gath pick, it's gems will deal percentage damage against them that can shut him down. Not in this game here from Samsung, except for obviously for like one member basically. And you just look at the CS numbers, and in every lane apart from top, they are even or looking just fine from the side of 1907 Fenerbahce. And in the one lane where it's comically large, 120 CS is the lead for Cubay. It doesn't matter if Cubay's in the side lane and can't get that inhibitor. Oh, no sight on this the side of Samsung. They're going to have to move in to check. Is the vision here from the side of 1907 Fenerbahce? They will throw the trinket over the wall. Get there. Syndra, can she take this away? No, Cho'Gath gonna snipe it out. That means the Baron has dropped, but Kube not happy about this exchange. Monsoon comes out to keep the team healthy. Daldrin now running for his life. Can all five members make it out? Kube does not want to let it happen. Haru coming in over the wall, debating, can he afford to shift over? Doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Five members with Baron for Fenerbahce. 1907 Fenerbahce have better shot calling than Samsung Galaxy. I never thought I was gonna say that doing Worlds, but they are showing it right now. They rush in the Baron. There is zero vision in that river from Samsung, and they're not in a position to stop it. No ambition, no clue is what we are seeing in this game. What a start. We thought, okay, it's going to be another 20-minute game. Since then, 1907 Fenerbahce have made good decision after good decision. They've drafted the comp that goes forward, ults this closest target, and can push forward. And now they're pushing forward for an inner turret. And now that we're seeing the lag of shot calling, it needs to come down to individual talent on Samsung's side if they want to win this game. 
We can see Ruler and Crown completely outplay Fanabache in the big late game moments. But so far, they have not been able to do it. And who do you outplay when you're Syndra against this comp? It never should have gotten to the point where you need to rely on three item Syndra taking down three item tanks. But it won't happen with the Limits. Even Zaya, the hardest of 80 carries for Syndra to take down. It's not the base broken. It's not the victory for 1907 Fenerbahce. But whatever happens from here, it is huge credit it to a team that did not let a snowballing Korean team run them down. And I want to bring it up again, the CS lead. You looked at 140, almost 150. It does not matter. matter. The gold is even. For the first time in this game, 1907 Fenerbahce have a lead. The Infernal Drakes are the only thing separating these teams. And they can't even communicate with their jungler. It's actually insane that in the late game, they're doing so much better than Samsung. We had Cloud9, we had Fnatic, and we had Team WE making it out of play-ins. Three teams from three major regions, and the only team from an emerging region was 1907 Fanabachi from Turkey, and they made it into Worlds. And we have Group to stages. praise them. We have to praise them, because normally it is Patton who falls flat in the laning phase. He has stayed even. He has been relevant in this game. Crash has been playing aggressive and willing to make a difference. Frozen has been bringing it home. And Thaldrin, he may not get a glorious role, but he's been surviving where many others could not. And now they're looking to take Kube down, get him a little bit of revenge. Optimistic. He is still five-item Trundle, but it shows that they are in no way perturbed by how strong the Trundle is. They're going to his lane. They're trying to push in his face. Minion wave. I'm gonna be two taken down by the True Shot Barrage when the Baron buff is there. Hogath is in the top side, and that's the real win here. Sinja doesn't really want to deal with a super tank. Kube still having to back off here. Pillar comes out, but Sigourney passive, easy to block up most of the damage. Now four members on the bottom side as Thaldren starts to roam down, starts to put pressure in the mid lane. 4-1 coming out. Not normally what we expect, but the double TP is definitely coming in clutch for 1907 Fenerbahce. Now just a slow siege. We talked about Samsung being the strong sieging composition. Now they just have to hold on as the Baron buff gives free access to the towers for 1907 Fenerbahce. See what I can do here. When they stunned up. Change DC starts to come in. How much damage can they afford to burn on the Trundle? The bit does come out. That means Kubase is running forward onto Crash. Now a much squishier Sichuani, but both sides backing off. That was the unkillable part here. Trying to ulti now on cooldown. At least for some seconds at least. It's a fairly low cooldown here in the late game. Meanwhile, the rest of uh, Fanabach is still pushing forward. But right as they have double cannon creep, the Baron falls off. Now Frozen is the ulti getting now. aggressive, getting snapped back, but Crown with a decent stun means that the team has to back off. Samsung still holding on quite well despite everything stacked against them. Yeah, trying to actually pile in to Trundle's lane is not something that 1907 Fenerbahce have had to do. The moment that you try to start cracking the base turrets, that's where the Trundle can actually be involved with the rest of the team. And if he's the only champion you have access to, he is the only unkillable one. So the previous points around Baron, they can engineer things. Around Elder Dragon, which spawns in less than a minute, they can try and engineer a pick. But if it's a conga line with the Trundle at the front, there's no killing Trundle. And of course, Padden, itemizing towards life too, wants to mitigate some of the thorn mill, wants to make sure that he stays healthy, but it means it's going to be so much harder to kill the Trundle. There is no healing reduction outside of the Bramble Vest on the side of 1907 Fenerbahce. When you look at Subjugate, when you look at the Frozen Domain, the lifesteal, this Trundle feels unkillable in so many of these circumstances. Sadly, though, for Samsung, they have a very hard time themselves killing the actual front line on 1907 Fenerbahce. So as long as 1907 Fenerbahce do not just try and tunnel everything on the Trundle and actually risk losing a tank for it. They can engage, get the ulti out, wait for the ulti to disappear, and then look for a re-engage. We got Elder Drake spawning in just a few seconds. Frozen likes to try and get a crazy flank and reach the backline quickly, but right now he's showing himself in the bottom lane. Where is that shot calling from Samsung? Two things happening at the same time. He's sitting will... on the bench right now. Oh, that's a fair point. QV will look to try and head off the Echo, but for now the Echo is trying to crack the inhibitor. Has to be careful. Not a lot of ways for him to take down the Trundle. Maybe if he gets low, but you just don't have that kind of time here to battle it out. And the awkward thing is if you try to outplay and try to ignore just like the Trundle was earlier, the uh, Trundle will be able to pillar you in and even with the face dive you'll be slowed. You'll take extra damage. So for now things are so close. Now both teams boys ready to go in that's crash looking to start the fight the flash does come out immediately Thaldrin is in the middle of the team a beautiful silence to kick it off ruler is so low Patton is looking to go off not gonna take him down in the end but they will find crown they will take down the
mid laner. Fenerbahce are in control. They are so aggressive. They make the call. Everyone flashing forward. Thaldron did not manage to kill the Ezreal, so the jungler is still alive, but he's back in base. He's gone. This Elder Drake is gone. Another fight in favor of 1907 Fenerbahce. Someone was going to be caught. It was Haru to begin. He went for more Malmordius, who seems very optimistic against the guaranteed CC. Everyone on Samsung, barring QV, cannot be hit by the Glacial Prison. We saw one hit, we saw one pick come in, and another buff to 1907 Fenerbahce. So they win the fight, they get the Drake, they force four flashes as well, setting them up for even more success in the next fight. Great engage here from Beautiful. Crash, gets onto Haru, thoughts with Bosnia, and then look at Patton here, to the left, going straight for Ruler, takes the 1v1, forces him out of the fight, meanwhile Crown is under pressure and he goes down. I mean, what can you do when Echo and Cho'Gath are running at you the only Trundle can ignore them. Unfortunately, the rest have to run away and pattern free hits in those fights. Juve's contribution, zero damage. And 907 Fenerbahce setting up for Baron control. Once again, remember that Samsung cannot face check for the life of them. And we talked about Samsung's comp. We talked about the Lulu. Hey, it's going to give them lane pressure. This is why they didn't want the Janna. But now the only thing that they need in these fights is a way to say stop, a way to say back up. That Lulu does not give you those tools. 1907 Fenerbahce, they are on the road to victory, but they have to bring it home. They still cannot afford to make massive mistakes. We are approaching that late game point where gold matters less and less, and the Baron could just be everything. No cleanse either on Crown's side. If that Banshee gets popped, he's uh, suddenly an easy target. Good damage onto the Janna, at least, from Samson's side, and he's engaged. All comes out once again, this time info buffered properly. Kube running for his life. Frozen off to the side. May just delay the fight. Starting out comes the parallel convergence. Not gonna find the stun. A nice pillar comes in for Kube. Does get the stun in the end. Frozen goes gold. Has the snap back. He wants to get out. Does not need it. Redemption there to back him up. Pressure on for Samson. So close to taking down the Guardian Angel of Kube. They won't get that. He can teleport back in. Bash has the war marks. He will get healthier as they look to try to turn onto Baron. But Kube, remember, has teleport. Dropping lower and lower. Still have the Elder Dragon burn. Pressure is on for Haru. He wants to redeem himself. He wants a chance. Now is the time. 97 Fenerbahce not hesitating. Starting to burn this one down. Pillar puts them in an awkward spot, but they are unconcerned. Ruler free hitting forward, but it does not matter. Baron drops from Fenerbahce. Frozen with a quick snap back to try to make it out of there. It's Kube on the front lines. The damage dealers are not in position. Featherstorm comes out. Haru playing aggressive, trying to avoid the snare. Is not going to get locked up, but still the Baron drops. Another very good call here. Kill the Baron and instant disengage. Notice how you're not seeing anyone stay behind. Or someone may be saying, oh, are we fighting or not? No, it's a call where all five members are ready to kill the Baron with the Feast and then back out. And communication issues be damned. They had the buddy system. No one was all alone and able to be picked off off the backside of the Baron. You see the slow, lumbering Thaldron. Still looks slow. He's so comically large. But they're able to just keep on pushing on. Very, very difficult to see what Samsung can do because 1907 Fenerbahce totally control the pace of this game. We're potentially looking at LCK's third seed sitting at one and two after the first week of the group stages. And in the most competitive group, at least on paper, that we have at Worlds, we will see RNG and G2 play in the next match after this. So there is still so much competition that have to battle from behind which is kind of an incredible thing to consider. We have to remember, if Samsung win here, if G2 find win, we could find ourselves in a three-way tie, but if Samsung lose, RNG is poised to take sole control of that first place in the group heading into the second week. G2 will be having a tough time fighting back. For 1907 Fenerbahce, finding their first win on this group stage could be massive for them. Now, however, the siege is set up. The gold difference not quite as crucial as we pass 40 minutes with Baron buff once again. All too important. They have the tanks, they have the engage at the ready. This is where Kube is really going to start to struggle. Is not this traditional tank, does not have the CC, does not have the lockdown. Kube taking the back end of some of these trades, but can just heal up off the minions. Want the viewers at home to understand that compositionally, and an even bigger hole is hold the point. Add it. Locked up, Featherstorm forced out. Nice play by Ruler. Good confidence on the front line. But Samsung's comp is in an even bigger hole than EDG's was against SK Telecom. Their comp scales worse than that SK than that EDG comp that eventually SKT could take down around this minute mark. So 1907 Fenerbahce have basically everything working for them. It will take 
as you said earlier, Deficio, a significant outplay from one of these revered players on the side of Samsung to wrestle back this game. That is where you show why you're considered one of the best players in the world if you are on Samsung's side. Crown made his way onto the top 20 list. Cuba as well sitting very high list. He's done his job on this trundle. Sadly, you cannot 1v9 the entire game. He's the only one who really is kind of at wit's end. He's 145 CS ahead, and yet it doesn't feel like you're getting that value. Like we saw, for example, Alfari with a different team comp that could actually facilitate Trundle to both split push and team fight with no other follow-up CC, with no real threat to the front line. They're finding it very difficult to make any value from that. That's why we see Samsung pushed into their base. Now we get that big top lane wave going as well. It was missing before, so Samsung had to only defend two lanes. And there is good wave clear with Tristana's static ship and, of course, the Syndra. Thaldrin coming with quite a large minion wave up here, gets the Banshees. All the summoners are available on the side of Samsung this time around, so a bit harder to engage onto them, but they're trying. Last Baron power wave, Ulti is going to go wide. Tedavashi backing off for now. Samsung doing what they can to hold on to the base. A good hold overall. Do note at home that there is only two ranged auto attackers on the side of 1907 Fenerbahce, and one of them is Japone on the Janna. Very unlikely to get auto attacks onto a inhibitor turret, so it's actually very difficult for them to set up structures. They're playing the full core press. They are pushing all the lanes. This is not ARAM style from the side of 1907 Fenerbahce, but when you have so much damage, all of it ranged effectively on the side of Samsung, actually breaking the base takes a lot of time. And if we look at Samsung comp, we, we have to look, okay, how can they potentially win a fight? Sure. A lot of what they have with this Ezreal and Lulu is kite back and keep hitting the front line of 1907 fan Apache. Problem for them is whenever they're doing that, there's constantly this echo like flying around from the side who's trying to land a stun onto you. There's a very aggressive AD carry from Patton as well who's trying to get to the back line because the only front line is the trunk and he's not big enough or strong enough on his own to just force everyone to respect him and back away. We need to see perfect hiding from Haro, from Koji Day, from Crown, and from Ruler, and they need to be able to either kill Frozen or kill one of the tanks first. I mean, it almost feels like Haro's contribution to a fight, or the biggest contribution, is the Essence Flux, the W, to increase the attack speed of Ruler. He has no crit modifiers, he has no Blade of the Ruin King, he's really only just Q-Poke that may register onto the squishier members of 1907 Fenerbahce, but literally does nothing to Thaldrin and Crash. If anything, hurting him is the Thornmail sure. start to come through. And when it's set up so well for 1907 Fenerbahce to play front to back, you do not have access to that back line. And you as an Ezreal can't afford to flank when Frozen is sitting there waiting. Lich Bane, Proto Belt, Death Cap, Void Staff to one-shot you if you give him the chance. Which is why I'm just looking at Ruler specifically. Art Sensor, full buff here, full uh, item on this Tristana. It's his damage that gotta come through. And then Crash and Thaldrin, one of those two guys needs to overextend in the fight. They've been doing a good job of stepping forward, taking damage, and then step back, wait for Warmux to proc, get the HP again, and then they can actually go for another fight. But if they overextend, Ruler can kill them. Again, that's an opening for Samsung. We already talked about the communication for 1907 Fenerbahce. It has been good thus far, but we have to remember, this is a team that normally falls apart in the early game. They thrive in the late game. They have strong leaders in Frozen and Thaldrin and it is showing up now, but they do have to take it to the next step. They have to break open the base, and it's hard for them to do. That single ranged auto attacker you already mentioned, but now it looks like Samsung may have found a fight. Still not gonna take the risk, not gonna push any further. And the surreal thing is, Dracos, this is not an adjustment after a couple of down days to watch VODs and work once again on simple communication. This is all in the thick of it. We're on the fourth match day in a row, and they are able to show pretty demonstrable improvements. They've understood that, okay, playing around Crash and playing aggressively puts behind four. Crash on a CC bot that was not put far enough behind in the early game means that he can see Hero, initiate on Hero, and if that's not QV, he's done his job. We've had a pause in the game now because 1907 Fenerbahce have been unable to push into the base. They've been waiting for a big objective to spawn. Baron is here now, Elder Drake in a minute. Meanwhile, looking at the items, Crown, 46 minutes into the game, is still not sitting on five fully completed items. It just shows how far behind he is in this game and how hard he got shut down. 1-4-0, and zero, not the scoreline we expected for Frozen versus Crown. Frozen definitely making an impact, even after the fumbles in the early game, even after Haru did so much. 
to get Samsung ahead, but we've been here before. Last time was nice. Yeah, all inning, and Abache sneaking their There's way gonna be the fight. Look at Crown, he's sitting right there behind him, just to the bottom of your screen. Trying to find the blank pad, it could be in trouble. He's gonna get stunned up today. Enough time before the ult comes out. Does not look like it. Thalter trying to get healed up. Kube pushing forward onto the back line. It's frozen from the backside. Can he find the stun? He's leaving he's dead. Before JJ. He's been shut down. Samsung are looking for the turn. Ruler is leaping forward. Someone needed to step up. And Samsung have found their opening. Kube flashes forward. The pillar dropping. Ruler looking for that hit. That's another kill for the 80 carry. We talked about Ruler either killing the tank or killing Frozen in case a mistake happened. And it did. Frozen played so well until point. Oh, That's the Ruler. Leatherstorm comes out, tries to back off, does get the lockdown, but it does not matter. Samsung still in the driver's seat, still in control. They have so much sieging damage. They have so many ranged auto attackers. They want to end the game before Frozen respawns. How cruel would this be after how well 1907 Fenerbahce has played? One last hold for 1907 Fenerbahce, the chan of the bottom lane duo. Can they bring it up? No! The damage! Burned through and taken out just when hope was rising for 1907 for Fenerbahce. Samsung come in and clean up. We have the player cams at the bottom of the screen. A small smile from Haru, the substitute. Everyone else stone-faced. They understand that this performance, this result, goes way against what we witnessed on the rift here today. So cruel for 1907 Fenerbahce to be denied their first victory of Worlds. You can see them on your screen. They look destroyed. Yeah, that last team fight needs to be rewatched again and again to figure out how did Frozen die instantly? Hourglass was not used. Flash was not used. His ulti was not used. At least from what I can see on my screen. We had this game where Samsung stopped the early game. Was supposed to just win in 25 minutes almost. And it became this fantastic comeback from 1907 Fanny And then denied in the very end. And a bittersweet win from Samsung, but a crushing defeat for 1907 Fenerbahce. They could have joined Albus Nox Luna as the only other emerging region team to take down a Korean on the world stage. But they were just so close in the end, and Samsung has to be hurting. And let's consider the very simple mathematical equation. Dumpstered yesterday with Samsung Galaxy. Today, lost for the great majority of the game to 1907 Fenerbahce. I think the magnifying glass has to be on the support staff, on the coaches. First yesterday, getting obliterated with the defense.